Hello guys, so welcome back to our beach day lessons. This is basically the last lesson in, you know, in this uh, semester. Uh, so in that lesson, we're gonna do one of the applications that, that we did in the lectures, which is basically the sequence detector. Uh, this example is very important because it will, you know, teaches you an, a, a very easy way to code, you know, or describe a state diagram. I will not go with structural design this time. I mean, uh, usually we do uh, packaging, you know, used what we already did, you know. But since we convert any uh, design into a state diagram, there is a very easy way to code that in VHDL, which is basically using the, the case statement, okay? So you're gonna go over each state using the case statement, okay? And of course, define you know, and switch between these, these states based on, you know, the input X, okay? So I'm gonna show you the design that we did in the lecture. So let me grab it for you guys. Close that one here. So uh, this is basically the melee design. We also did in, in more, but I will do the melee. Uh, I will do the melee here in the in the coding. So you have two states, okay. Uh, the first state zero means you receive zero number of ones, okay. And the second state one means you receive the uh, one or more ones. Yeah, I know it's confusing. <laughs> so remember, this is a sequence detector. So uh, the input x something like this. It's a stream, a series uh, of, of bits that come one after other on, on each block edge, okay? And you are searching for two consecutive ones. Once you have this, you're gonna have one. So look, you have another two here, so you have another out. Then you reset because, you know, the output is zero. So if we compare this zero with the previous, you have zero one, it's not one one. So the output will be zero. Then you have zero one. Again, they are, no, they are not two ones, so the output is zero. Then you have two ones, then the output will be one, and so on, okay? So uh, you, it's a very simple state, state, diag state diagram, just two states, okay? Uh, and the transition between a state to another or even the, the output value will be determined based on the input and, of course, the state itself. So let's do, let's, let's see how I'm gonna do that uh, or code that would describe that basically in which there, okay? I will not do the design. So the design, we know we studied the design. It was, it was this is a circuit basically. So it is just a deep flip flop and an end gate, okay? But I'm gonna describe that is, or, or for deep flip flop, you have a deep flip flop and the gate and the XOR. But uh, I, I, I choose this time to teach you how to do directly, you know, in a, in, in a behavioral fashion or behavioral modeling, okay, the, the description of the state diagram itself. It's a very powerful technique, okay? So let's check. Here is the design, okay? Here is, you know, the entity. So uh, our design has uh, three inputs, X, reset, and the clock. Also reset here has no, uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not like, for example, the design that we see uh, last time with the previous recording that without a reset, you will have undefined output all the time. Okay. Uh, so you might use or might or might not use, it's optional. Uh, the basic inputs are the X, the input stream, this guy here, okay. And is the output, Y. And of course, the clock, okay? Let's continue. So uh, this is architecture now. Again, it's I, I called it behavior because here we, we are describing the design. We are not implementing the design directly. No, we describe the function and then the compiler will do it for us. We'll create the deep flip flop or whatever, okay? Okay, to, to do that, that job exactly as we described. Okay, so I defined uh, a signal called the state, okay? So uh, this state will be just zero or one. So I defined also a type and you can define a new type in, in, 
it's in which they just like C++, okay? And this type is called the states, okay? Which just zero or one. You can you can just go like this. You can just define ja very normal, you know, signal and call it state, okay? Just like this. And you can even, in standard logic, I mean. Okay, guys, you can just go like this and give it, you know, uh, uh, some initial value. This is important. Okay, you can just go like this and comment these two lines if you want. Okay, but this is just very, also a very, you know, interesting feature in which it is that you can just define types. So uh, I will go back to the original design, but again, you can do just a very simple signal so like this. So here I define the type called states. So this type, any any variable or any signal defined based on that type will have just a value of zero or one, okay? So I define the signal called the state of, of type states, not a standard logic or, you know, or whatever, of type states. And I give it initial value zero. Uh, then I, def you know, I begin my uh, description here. I define the process. This process will, will execute when, when, when the clock change or the reset change. If reset is equal to one, will be equal to zero. Although we're gonna, we, we will not use it in the reset in the test bench because eventually, you know, Y will be uh, of some value and the design will be correct. Okay. Now, the correct stuff is here. On the rising edge of the clock, do that. What is that? You're gonna switch between states. So we're gonna make a case uh, statement on, and, and, and our variable uh, uh, is a state uh, variable here or signal. Okay. Based on the state value, either zero or one, we're gonna switch between these two states here and define the output. Okay. So case state is, when case is equal to zero, you check X now. If we are zero here, and X is zero, we're gonna stay in the same state and the output will be zero. We stayed in the same state, so the state is zero, and Y is zero, okay? Else, else mean X is one. If X is one, we're gonna switch to another state when it means the state is equal to one, and still the output will be zero. That's what happened here. Y is output is zero, and the new state now is one, and then in there. The other possibility for state, it, if it's equal to one. When, when it's one, uh, if we are here basically, in that state here, and the input is zero, we're gonna go back to the original state zero and the output will be zero. That's what happened here. If x equal to zero, y is zero, is state equal to zero. Else, else means x is equal to one. So that means the output will be one and we're gonna stay in the same state. So the state will be equal to one as well. Okay, in the F, in the case, in the F, the big F here, which uh, of the reset in the process in the design. Okay, it's really, it's really elegant. Okay, you can describe any basic, any synchronous circuit, you know, using the, such a kind of coding. Okay, now let's run the, uh, you know, the, uh, the test bench here. So let me compile it. And let's run. Oh yeah, we already have it, so just can like this. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's now. Now we need something to write on because uh, it's not easy to determine if if it's really working just by looking at the. It's not like addition, circuit, and subtraction. So you need all all the time to look at the you know the the positive edges and and check. Okay. So on each positive edge, we're gonna record the X and also record, uh, you know, the corresponding Y. And we should see, you know, that when I receive two consecutive ones, Y should be one. Another good thing here is to also show the, the state. The state is not an input. Look, uh, when you do the simulation, by default, you, got, uh, you, you will have here in this list only the inputs and the outputs. So you have here, for example, X reset clock and clock and Y, okay? I just included here uh, the clock uh, X and Y. I didn't include the reset, as I said, I will not use it, okay? 
So how to include internal signals, something like this one here, just by clicking DOT, device under test. So it will appear to you, okay? We need here a state, so I'm gonna take it and put it here, okay? And of course, it will not appear as an output, so we should restart our uh, simulation here. That's really simple, okay? And boom, we have it, okay? Let's now, you know, on each positive edge, it check X, the state, and also the output. Okay, here is the, most, uh, the first positive edge. X is zero. The state uh, is zero, so we are here now. And Y is zero. Okay, that's that's logic because we didn't receive two ones, so Y should be zero. Now let's go to the next clock edge. Look, it's the most of clock edge, of course. Okay, look, X here is one. So we are in zero, but we received one. So what 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 will happen? State will it change it to one. Look, uh, yeah, of course we should just go a little bit. Yeah, it change will it change it to one? Become one. This is when we receive one, and y is still zero. Why? Because we didn't do, receive two ones, uh, you know, after each other. Now let's go to the third clock edge, most of edge. Here it is. X is still one. It's you know yes. X is still one. Uh, so if we are in one, look the state is the state is state <laughs> the state uh, is still one. So we we didn't change the state. So if we are in one and we receive one, we will need to, not to change the state. And do I now become one? So X zero is one, yeah, sorry. So now become one here. Look, because we have two consecutive ones, Y become one, okay? Very nice, let's continue. The third clock edge, sorry, or the fourth, the fourth, yes. Look, X is still one. We are still in uh, state one. The current, the current state is, is, is one, so we not a change. And the Y should be one as well. And the Y is one. Now, the fifth clock edge, yeah, X now is zero. So we should transition now. We should go, let's check, yeah, we go. So state was one, now becomes zero. So we go here because we received the zero. And Y now is zero. That's logic because these are not two ones, so this will not be one, okay? Now the sixth, clock edge, positive edge. X is one here, so state will be one again, so we did, we, we did that transition again, okay? Uh, y is still zero, that's right. So here X is one, I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, that's it. So the seventh now, X is still one. We were here, stay now, since we received one, we're gonna stay in, in, in the one state, but now Y become one. And that's really logic because we have one one here, so that should be one. Okay, and so on guys, if you continue, you will have the same uh, stuff, okay? It's really very powerful, you know, very powerful technique. Uh, whatever the number of states, you can just describe each state just using very simple, you know, state diagram like this, okay? This is, this is basically the state diagram, but just written, you know, in a written form. Okay, guys, thank you very much and have a great day, bye-bye.